My mother was a fighter and a remarkable woman, and she had a terrific attitude. She was uh, direct and strong. There was nothing phony about my mother. She was the kind of person that didn't let things bother her too much, and everybody liked her. My mother was diagnosed with uh, MS when I was uh, eight years old, and uh, it, it had a, you know, as I think back, an incredible impact on our family. It always hurts to have a loved one who no longer can act the same way, uh, slows down. It's a disease that causes loss of the fatty coating of the nerves in the brain and the spinal cord, and that's called myelin. So we call MS a demyelinating disease because the myelin is stripped away from the nerves. We're lucky to have advanced MRI techniques for imaging that make it very easy to diagnose MS in the vast majority of patients. It can start off slow and subtly. It's a collaboration of lots of different symptoms that add up to where a patient can be immobilized even if outwardly they look pretty good. I had a full-time daycare for over 20 years. I had a master teacher certificate in teaching special needs religious education. And all of that, you know, was put, uh, put on hold because my physical ability to be able to interact with the children just wasn't there anymore. It just inhibits anything you're doing and puts your whole life on hold, but you just have to shift courses and, and go on with it. My mother and I had a conversation about where she was living and about the conditions that she was living in. And I found this organization that was starting to build a greenhouse, the first urban multi-story greenhouse uh, facility in, in the country. It hadn't been built yet, hadn't broken ground but it was a hope because it's a very unique place. This was nothing like what she was gonna be in. The greenhouse concept had been around for a while, but this was, to my knowledge, it was the first time it had ever been employed in an MS setting. The skilled care facilities that were available for people with MS never seemed quite right for people with MS. When we started hearing about the greenhouse projects and that they may be able to work for people with severe cases of MS, instead of focusing just on nursing care or skilled care that people needed, they could focus on people continuing to live their lives to the maximum extent that they were able in light of what they were grappling with within their lives. This was, for me, just a very, very exciting possibility. What the Sonia Siska residence is, it's not a nursing home with neighborhoods. It's not a nursing home with private rooms. It is a 10-bedroom private home that happens to offer very discreet skilled nursing care. For young individuals, painfully alert, who need skilled care, the greenhouse model is the best model of care. I got here, the doors opened up, and you saw the whole facility, the whole house, and it was just absolutely amazing. Compared to what it, where I was, it uh, was a new way of life. The MS Society has a dual mission. Uh, you know, it, it funds research, but it also has a mission uh, to take care of people with MS and to serve them, and as well as their families. But for the population of people, particularly those with progressive MS. Taking care of people is a priority. The society, as well as you know, the board of the New England chapter, came to the conclusion that when the, this opportunity presented itself to step up to the plate, and I was part of that, and uh, I was happy to do it. We recognized when we were presented with this opportunity that this would be a very important facility. Once we said we'd do it, we had to be willing to continue to support it. There's certain kinds of governmental programs that are available to supplement uh, this kind of program. However, there's a shortfall between what's available through other sources and what's necessary to maximize the environment for people there with MS. We want people to feel productive, 
and feel like they're part of society and to retain whatever independence they can of mind or body. Many times people have asked us, why bother? And our answer is, why not? These are folks that are in the prime of their life, that still want to be involved in the community, that still want to feel that they are very productive members of society, although they still need a high level of skilled nursing care. If the Leonard Florence Center for Living has the ability, in partnership with the National MS Society, to really affect a positive change in individuals' lives, why not bother? We are the first and only in the world that offers very advanced technology. What the technology has given back to the individual has just transformed individuals' lives. The only way for us to continue our support of the center, the only way for centers like this to continue generally is through private philanthropy and through donations from our supporters. MS originally came into her life and it was very debilitating and it was very depressing for her. And every symptom that she ever got was very overwhelming for her. And I think that this facility has allowed her to grow. It's given her freedom back. It's given her independence back. Having seen, you know, a person who, you know, fought their illness all this time, and to see other people living, a, you know, a whole life despite their illness is just a great thing. Although there's so many individuals that we can't help because their disease is too bad or our drugs aren't good enough or we can't, for whatever reason, find them an appropriate place outside the home to live. Seeing one individual prosper, like my patient, has made all the difference and we, I wish I could bottle that feeling and send it out to everyone and make it happen for all my patients.